Okay, so we're going to start with the landing at the main floor level. So I'm just going to go in my browser down here to main floor. And I'm going to create this fairly randomly at first. So I'm going to click on the architecture tab and go, go through creating a floor the norm, way I normally would. And I have to specify before I create the sketch here that I want a 200 millimeter concrete slab instead of this default 400. So I'll click on edit type, make a duplicate, just call this 200 millimeter concrete. And then of course I have to make the changes to the structure. 200 millimeters and I'll make the material here cast in place concrete gray. One little modification I'm going to make here to the material settings is I don't want to have this sand pattern displaying. It's a little bit kind of uh, messy, kind of uh, graphically unnecessary, a little bit too much clutter. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set that back to no pattern and it still shows the concrete uh, with this pattern when it's cut but in just projection views it won't show anything. So I'll click OK three times to get out of that. And now I'm ready to start creating the sketch for the floor. I'm going to use the rectangle tool. And initially, I'm going to do this fairly randomly and kind of ambiguously here. I'm not worried about exact placement. Um, I'm going to rely on the align tool to do that. So rather than trying to get a proper snap or use proper numbers or temporary dimensions, I'm just going to use the align tool so that I can align the sides of the landing with the sides of the flight of stairs. I'm also going to just take this line and initially just kind of move it to the first riser. And then I'm going to click on the green check mark and I'm going to see what sort of placement I get from that. So what I've got here is a condition where, of course, I've got a gap that I don't want. I actually need this floor to be at this point here. So I'm just going to use the move tool and rely on a snap and just snap here from the end point to this point where the diagonal meets the horizontal on the stairs. So I need a little bit of extra length off to the left. But as I said, I'm going to get to that later. For now, what I want to do is just kind of put it in place and then I'll worry about um, the diagonal transition that I want to achieve there as well. So I'll move up to the second floor and do the landing and repeat the process there again. So on the architecture tab, once again, the floor tool. And I'll just go with the same 200 millimeter concrete type, create a fairly random kind of ambiguous rectangle initially. And then I'm going to use the align tool to get a little bit more proper placement. And I'll go to the outside edge here of the flight of stairs, top and bottom. And then I'll just click the green check and we'll go back to the elevation view and you'll see the result. Okay, so I've got a few things I need to clean up here before I start refining the landings. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna deal with this little gap right here. The way that I can do that is I can actually change a setting for the structural depth of the stair. And the way that I access that is I click on the stair, and instead of editing the type, I go to Edit Stairs. And remember, when I do this, it's going to put me back in sketch mode. And if I click on the stair, again, it's a little misleading, but this isn't actually the set of properties for the stair. This is the set of properties over here for the run or for the sketch. And if I click Edit Type, I'll then be able to access the structural depth right here. And I'm going to set that to 155.87. So this is why I made the point of adding those two decimal points into our length format. Uh, it was only by doing that that I was able to be that precise and get something that you can see lines up pretty well here with the bottom of the landing. Okay, with that in place, I'll click on the green check. That's finished. And now that I've made that change, I've got a different condition down here at the bottom. So I need to make this just little subtle adjustment here to the position of the landing like that. And now that I've got those property uh, placed in reference to the stairs, I can be a little bit more specific about how deep they are. So up on the second floor, what I want to do is I want to create a landing that's 1500 millimeters deep. That's actually a little bit more than I need. Most codes um, have some sort of reference to the landing being just as deep as the stairs are wide. I'm going to go a little deeper though. And I'm going to achieve that accuracy by clicking here on the annotate tab and clicking detail line. And I'm going to use the pick lines function specify an offset here of 1500 millimeters and then I'm just going to click on that top line or hover over it you can see the blue dotted line off to the right and that now represents position 1500 millimeters away from this top point here uh, so now having done that I'm going to adjust the sketch for the stair use the align tool put it to that point click on the green check to finish and then I'll just get rid of that 2d detail line, which I no longer need and I'll repeat the process down below on the main floor. So once again, 
I'm going to initially start by doing a detail line 1500 millimeters away from that bottom line, which remember, remember doesn't represent the bottom riser. It actually represents that um, superimposed line that meets the floor parallel with the line, the slope of the stairs. And once again, you can see as I hover, there's the blue dotted line off to the left. And this will now be my reference for adjusting the sketch of the stair. So I'll use the align tool, line that up, click on the green check to finish, delete that 2D detail line. I no longer need it. And there we go. So now I have a condition where I've got properly placed, properly sized stairs and landings. I still have this condition here and I want to cut this out so that I've got a sloping portion of the floor that matches the slope of the stairs. In order to do that, I need to have a wall in between the stairs. Uh, at the moment, I only have one set of stairs. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create a copy of this uh, flight of stairs, put it over here so that it extends all the way from two up to three. And then I'll put the wall in place and then I can fix this condition down below. So next step is just to go back to main floor and I'm gonna click on the flight of stairs. I'm gonna use my, my copy tool and I'm gonna copy it over 1300 millimeters. I wanna have a 200 millimeter concrete wall in between. And of course, now that I've done this, it's just gonna be in exactly the same position parallel to the first flight. So I wanna click on this copied set of stairs, select edit stairs, and then select the sketch or the run and then just use this button here, which is the flip direction. So that'll swap it around so that now it goes from the right side to the left. And then all I have to do to fix this is to just change it so that the base level is now second and the top level is now third. I'll click on the green check. And then in the south elevation view, I can see the result. So I've got a condition now where when I place the wall, it'll be in the proper spot. And then that'll allow me to create this little cut on the, on the bottom landing. So the next step is I want to go to main floor once again, and I'm going to go to the architecture tab. I'm going to click on the wall tool. And I'm going to start with this basic wall generic, which is exactly what I want. I just want to change the materials. So I'm going to click on edit type. Uh, I'll make a duplicate and just call this my 200 millimeter concrete wall. And then I'll change the structure. The 200 again is uh, where it needs to be already. I just need to change the materials here. And I'll make that a cast in place concrete. Okay, now that I've done that, I can just create a fairly randomly generated stretch of wall, relying once again for proper placement on the align tool. And as I said, this is gonna occupy that space between two flights of stairs. So I'll click on my 3D view just to have a look at this. And of course, initially it's just going to be a short little wall. I'm going to click it, click on it again. And then I want to just extend this up in this case where it says second floor. Uh, for the moment, I want this to go all the way up to, let's just say fifth floor. We'll take it all the way up. Eventually it'll, it'll be uh, the space between all of my flights of stairs. So before we uh, move on to the next step, uh, we just want to make a point here of uh, modifying the landings so that of course they come to the right point on this set of stairs leading up to the third floor. And then eventually we're gonna to have to do the same thing down here with this, this landing so that it extends over to the other side. So to begin this process, I wanna just modify, first of all, this landing so that the sketch extends over to the top side of the landing. So in the second floor level, I'm going to uh, edit the boundary and I'm just gonna stretch it over using the align tool would be best. And I'll click on the green check just to kind of show you the result. I'm gonna switch over to the north elevation view and we'll see of course that we've got this condition here where we're a little bit short. So we want this thing to come all the way over to this point. So we're gonna to have to add a little bit of an extension here to the sketch. So I'm gonna go back to edit boundary to see the sketch for that landing. And it'll ask me for a floor plan view and I'll use second. And what I wanna do here is I wanna create a little extension of the landing that runs, and I'm not gonna to be too worried initially about the exact position, but I want something that looks a little bit more like that. So I need to have this extra little bit of concrete here to cover that gap. Once I've created those initial lines, I'm just gonna click here on the trim extend the corner and just clean up the sketch like that. I'll click on the green check. And once again, in the north elevation, you'll see that I'm pretty close 
And we're not going to worry about an exact placement here because we've got another tool that we have to use to get the, the diagonal slope. So to wrap up with the landings, uh, before we move on to handrails, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our south elevation view. And now that we've got the wall in place, we've got a reference plane that we can use a void extrusion on. And the void extrusion will cut away this little diagonal chunk of the floor so that we get a condition where we've got a flush condition between the bottom of the stairs and the bottom of the slab. So to do that, we're going to go to the Architecture tab. We're going to click on the Component Tool, the bottom part of it and access model in place. We're going to choose the floor type. Click OK. We're going to accept the default name. And then you can see that it's put us into sketch mode with some different tools displaying here. We're going to choose void forms, but we want the bottom part of it so that we can access void extrusion. Having done that, it's now going to ask us which work plane we want to do this on. So we'll go with the default, pick a plane and click OK. And that just requires that we do this extra step where we specify this face of the wall. So kind of move your cursor around until you see a blue line highlight around the entire wall. And then it's ready for you to start creating your sketch. I'll click on the pick lines tool again. I'm going to start with this diagonal line on the bottom of the stairs. I'm going to click this vertical face on the landing and then the horizontal face of the landing. And to finish off the sketch, I want to use the trim extend the corner tool and select the diagonal line and the bottom line. And then I want to click the diagonal line. Notice I'm clicking on the center part. So not out here, but right here. So if I click right here and then the, the vertical line, now I've got this little wedge shape that's going to cut out the unnecessary overlapping geometry. It's usually a good idea to just add a little bit more uh, clearance here with this sketch line. And by that, I just mean I'm going to click on the bottom line and use my arrow key and just nudge it out a little bit. No specific amount is required here. I just want to ensure that I don't have overlapping coplanar faces and something like that there as well. Now that I've done that, I can go to a 3D view. And what I want to do here is I want to create an extrusion end at negative 1100. An extrusion starts just going to be at zero. And then when I click the green check, you can see that what that's going to do is it's going to extend this void form so that it comes all the way out to the south face here of the landing. I can even give this a little bit of extra extension just again to make sure that I don't have any overlapping coplanar faces. And then I'm just going to use the cut tool and I'm going to click on the floor and then I'm going to click here on the bottom of the, uh, or on the bottom of the wedge and then I'll click on the green check mark. So now you can see that I've achieved that flush condition that I wanted. Uh, I've got a good transition here between the main floor landing and then I've got the same thing happening up above here and then I would repeat the process over here on the second floor which I can do in the north elevation. Once again going to architecture, components, model in place, choosing floors, clicking OK and then accepting the default name and then using the same tool here. So void forms, specifically void extrusion. It'll ask me for a work plane. Now I'm going to click the north face, the back face of the wall, and then go through the same process. So picking lines, top, bottom, and diagonal, and then using the trim extend to corner tool and creating this little triangle shape, moving these sketch lines out just a little bit, just to ensure I get a nice clean cut. And then clicking on the green check mark to finish the sketch. And now you can see that it's created the same, uh, same dimension here, same extension, 1100 millimeters. I'm going to go a little bit extra. And then to finish this off, I just have to click on cut, select the landing, and then the triangle. And now you can see that I've got that finished condition. So I've dealt with the floor transitions. And now the next step is to start dealing with the handrails.